Matt, the other thing that uh, we haven't really talked about or touched base on with yet, the other thing. <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, all right, ready? Ready. <laughs> What's up everybody, Jake and Matt here from Prism Supply. Here we are with our 2022 Pan America Special S's and uh, we've done a lot with these bikes. Yeah, we've had them for about a year. We picked them up in January 2023 and here we are in December of the same year. And so we've really spent a solid amount of time with these bikes, literally ridden them all over the country. We've modified them, we've crashed them. How many times do you think these things have been on the ground? By me or you? <laughs> well, <that's> combined. <laughs> let's, let's, okay. let's not. <laughs> oh, well, it's it more for me. That's what I'm a lot. I think that's actually one of the most things that's impressed me about these bikes is how durable they are. I mean, we've freaking wrecked these suckers in the Colorado mm -hmm. Rocky Mountains. You sent it through the windshield at one point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Luckily, the bike and I were uh, unscathed, and so you're right. These things have proven themselves to be very durable. At the same time, when you were doing that, I was—I don't even know what happened to me. I just kind of got buck cherried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a rock sent you into yeah, another rock. Yeah, rock sent me into another rock, <laughs> made me all buck cherried, and I went down. We got these bikes and they were fully stocked 2022 Pan America Specials. We added a ton of parts and accessories straight from the Harley catalog. Been super pleased with the quality of those products that we've added. Out of all of the parts we ordered from Harley, what's your favorite aftermarket accessory? If, if somebody out there just bought a Pan America and we had to recommend one part to buy, what would you recommend and why? To me, this bike is like adventure. It's a tool for me to, to commute on daily. And so I would say right off the bat, for my daily use, I would at least, at minimum, want like the back hard bag like, you, like this bike has. That would probably be the first thing that I would get. And it's just nice to like be able to put my helmet in when I'm not riding or my backpack in when I am riding. But as far as like a performance part, I, I'm a big fan of two things, the skid plate. It's like mm. a much beefier skid plate that we put on, as well as the exhaust. But when you get the exhaust, you have to do the exhaust mod. We took the Screaming Eagle muffler off and there's a baffle in there and you can literally just unscrew a little Allen bolt and and knock the baffle out and it makes it sound so much louder sounds so much throatier what's what your else? favorite mod i do think the skid plate is nice it adds a nice aggressive look to it and adds a lot of durability especially if you're planning to ride these things off-road and for daily maintenance if, when you go to do an oil change this thing has a cutout for the oil drain plug whereas the original skid plate does not and so that adds a step to your oil change process yep. and so so that's probably the most practical modification. These lights are also sweet, these LCD lights. LED. Uh, what did I You're say? You're a computer guy, LCD. LCD. <laughs> How many DPIs are in these lights? <laughs> you got two big old Apple monitors, <laughs> LCD monitors. I wish, that'd be sweet. <laughs> yeah, these LED lights are sweet, especially at night, and it kind of makes you look like a cop when you're uh, riding behind somebody. Oh, and the tires. From an Ooh, aesthetics yeah. point of view, tires might be step one. 100%. It, just to make it look more aggressive. I fully agree with that. When we changed from the factory tires, which were made for more street, maybe a little bit of off-road, but mm -hmm. to these, which was like a 50-50 on-road, off-road, I really love of how it changed aesthetically. Yeah, huge, huge difference. Matt and I have done a, a lot of trips on this bike together. We're the two at the shop that have ridden these bikes the most, so this is why we wanted to do the video together, just kind of recapping it. So we've learned a lot. We've done some crazy adventures. I can't even remember them all right now, but. Well, by far the biggest trip we went on with these bikes was Colorado. We rode from Red River, New Mexico, up through the Colorado BDR into the Wyoming BDR, and we landed in Sturges for the, the rally this year. Man, it was nice. I, We've both done some off-road stuff before, whether that be on a bicycle or dirt bikes or whatever, but I would say the difference, the main difference was these bikes just can carry. They're like workhorses. You can put anything you want into them and just go. I felt like I could have lived on this bike for a year. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite story from our Colorado BDR trip? I guess I would just say, and I'm trying to relate it to riding other motorcycles off-road too, like the big thing that I, I enjoyed about this bike is I didn't feel fatigued at the end of the day. When I've done other trips like that, it's been like, I just cannot wait to get off this motorcycle. I know it's not necessarily like a favorite moment, but that's a realization that I mm -hmm. had. That's good. What about you? Yeah, what was my favorite part of that trip? Well, we got to ride with uh, Dan, Nick, and Brad. Johnny, behind the camera, he was also with us. And so it was just a great group of guys. It was a great trip overall. I loved the scenery. Hagerman Pass, I'd, that's actually the only pass I remember <laughs> being on. <laughs> so probably not gonna use that bit, but uh, being on being you know on top of the Rocky Mountains with with these bikes and just the the landscape of of Colorado was insane. And so every, every corner we took, it was like a, a new postcard. 
and just being up there with with a great group of guys was it was really fun for me and you know these bikes they enable things like that to happen that's right so matt during the colorado bdr you actually captured a lot of content i, I guess i haven't introduced you as that you are our content guy between you and johnny you guys have captured all of our content through mm -hmm. uh, 2023 so when we were on the colorado bdr you actually outfitted this bike to carry your camera gear that's right it's not mounted right now but we actually had a tank bag and that's where i kept my camera and i would just shove my camera in the tank bag so that it was within arm's reach and every time we would stop for a break or stop for maybe an issue or just if there was like a, a big obstacle coming up and we knew we wanted content of it like a like a river crossing or something like that i would you know shoot ahead grab the camera out of the tank bag jump off the bike and shoot the rest of you guys you know, coming through the, the river or whatever it is that we were doing. Uh, one of my other favorite moments was uh, watching you jump a log. That was definitely a highlight of the year. <laughs> you got a little butt cherried on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the hill climb too. Oh, that was butt, that, that was hanging on for dear life is what that was. Which is crazy, like when we did that video, we were like, there's no way we're gonna be riding this technical of stuff in Colorado and everything we did in Colorado was much more difficult than that. But yeah. we just it just took us to get the feel of the bike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was literally our first time ever taking these bikes off-road. It was a learning curve a bit. Even when we finally got to the Rockies and started riding off-road, it wasn't until day two or three where I started to actually feel super comfortable and confident. Before then, it was just moving slow, you know, getting used to the bike, getting to know it. Once you get the hang of it and, and learn it, it becomes really easy to ride. It does a lot of work for you. Oh, we did a maintenance video. Yeah, we, we started a maintenance series on these bikes and we actually filmed that at my house garage. So that was that was kind of fun. It was the first time we've ever done that. Mm -hmm. um, but we did a three part series where we did chain maintenance, oil change and air filter replacement. Just kind of like your first three basic maintenance items. If you're a Pan America owner and you know, you're a DIY kind of person and you want to get your hands dirty, go uh, watch and learn from us so you don't repeat the same mistakes yeah. we made when we did it. We haven't talked about this yet. You daily ride your bike. What's it like riding every day on the Pan America versus your old truck? Yeah, so I have a, a 97 Ford F350 and it's big. It's like the size of a school bus. So I never really realized how annoying it was to drive and to park until mm -hmm. I started dailying on this thing. I would say through 2023, I probably rode this bike, I'm not exaggerating when I say this, 300. At least 367 days. Yeah, at least 367 days of the At least, minimum. Even in the mornings, like I think this morning it was 27 degrees when I left my house. But just the way that the bike's designed, and it keeps you warm, it's it's not bad. It's, so that's been a really fun experience for me is being able to ride this year round. Mm -hmm. And I've never had a bike that's allowed me to do that. Matt and I are both into some cycling, so we wanted to try to come up with a, a bike rack that would work on a motorcycle. And honestly, we had no clue how that was gonna feel. When you're cruising on the bike, if it was gonna pull you a certain way or not, catch the wind, mm -hmm. and it, you can't really tell that it's on there. Like, it feels great. So that's been a cool addition. I'm excited to get a lot of mountain biking in. We brought our buddy Dredd, who uh, is owner of Spoke Easy here in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and he's an avid cyclist. And so we brought him to Brevard, North Carolina, we loaded gravel bikes up onto these bikes and we did a lap around Avery Creek and then spent some time riding the motorcycles around Brevard, looking at waterfalls and all that fun stuff. There's a video coming soon called Prison Trippin' with Dread, so keep an eye out for that and you'll get to see more about these bike racks and what it's like to carry a bicycle on a Pan America. In summary, I would say this is one of my favorite bikes I've ever owned. I, I, I really mean that. It's really opened up my eyes to motorcycle touring and adventure riding and just being able to like get on a bike and ride cross country, no matter what the road is or the terrain is. If it's a gravel road, if it's a dirt road, or if it's a highway road, this bike has allowed me to do that. And it's been a good year of experiencing that. It's, and it's opening up doors for more motorcycling options for me. Let us know if, if you wanna buy a bicycle rack for one of these Pan Americas, uh, drop us a line. And uh, you know- Drop it in the comments. Yeah, yeah. Drop, like, comment, subscribe, you know, you know the drill.